Yeah. Where do I begin? First off, there's a couple of channels on YouTube that I love to follow that specialize in reviewing horror films. I get a lot of suggestions from them, and I was watching it earlier this week, a young lady, and um, she did a review on this mini series on Netflix called Brand New Cherry. It deals with supernatural, revenge, it's based in LA, Hollywood, with directors and actors. I'm like, ooh, this is right up my alley. <laughs> so I thought. Complete spoilers in this review because if you decide to watch this, this on you. This move, this is utterly ridiculous, stupid, terrible, but intriguing. Brand New Cherry, I think it's based off a, a series of books from my understanding and Netflix adopted this and it had eight episodes. Um, it takes place in the early 1990s. This young lady, Lisa Nova, played by Rosa Salazar. Fine as fuck. Got big ass eyes. She looks like that girl from um, The Craft. You know the weird one with the dark lipstick and them big ass eyes with them sharp ass teeth like Dracula? And she's also played the love interest in The Water Boy. That weird looking chick with that big ass mouth? Yeah, yeah. Well, Rosa Salazar looks just like her with them big ass eyes. They're odd looking women, but in their own way, kind of attractive. They're good at these kind of roles. Well, she plays an inspiring young director and she shot this indie film in the woods with her friends and has gotten the attention of some people in Hollywood. So she decides to migrate and come to Hollywood. Just picked up her clothes and whatever she had. She was basically living in her car and drove to Hollywood. She called a friend when she got to LA. Hey, can I crash on your couch? I got a meeting with Lou Burke, who's like the big producer in LA. He's like, yeah, sure. Uh, me and my girlfriend might be coming and crash here. And she crashes on the couch. And the next day she had this meeting with this producer named Lou Burke. Now she got a phone call from you think his secretary to come to LA we like your film you really never know who that woman was well she meets Lou Burke he says look here's an advance we love your film you're going to direct her she said I'm adamant I want to direct my own, my own film it's a black and white horror film that she did and something tragic happens at the end that everybody's like oh man this is great for cinema you never know what that part is right they keep that a secret to the very end so she goes back to her friend's place. She got some money. She decides to rent out an abandoned building. One room in this abandoned, fucked up building. She's weird like that. She's getting invited to all these Hollywood parties to meet all these producers and directors. And my man showing her the ropes. Come on now, this is Hollywood. Homeboy try to get out of there and try to get some of that ass. She turned him down and their relationship turned ever since then. Dude was married, got kids and... Lives in a big old penthouse. She went there and all of a sudden she signed a bogus contract. She don't have rights to her own movie. And that's where the anger began. So she's pissed. And she's at this gathering with all these directors and producers. And a strange woman walks through the room. Her hair is kind of tatted and matted up and stuff. Um, her name was Boro. That's a strange ass name for a woman. She comes up to Lisa and says, look, I can tell something's bothering me. Can I help? She goes, well, I don't know you who you are. How can you help me? She goes, look, I can help you do things to people that pissed you off. She's like, okay, I'm with it. And the lady says, when you come by my place, there's no address, but you'll, know, you'll recognize my house on a certain street and make sure you bring my cat. She's like, yo, cat. Homegirl goes home to her own apartment in this abandoned building, and there's a cat there. Yeah, these, these, and outside there's some other cats out there eating on some some remains of something. These cannibal kittens. So this cat just shows up at her place. It's like, goddamn, it's an eerie, crazy-looking cat. 
Well, she goes visit that woman and she doesn't bring that cat. And the lady says, you did not bring that cat. That was part of the deal. She goes, well, look, I'm not sure if I'm going to be fucking with you, but I do want to get back at this producer. He's a slime ball. He stole my movie. He's a piece of shit. Homegirl's like, well, welcome to Hollywood. She goes, okay. I help you get back at him. She goes, I want to inflict pain on him. So this, mo this woman is obviously some type of witch, some type of voodoo woman. And she goes, you got to do this. You got to do that. And, um, how can I pay you? She goes, well, I, she goes, look, you can pay me with cats and kittens. She goes, cats and kittens? And Hunger starts all of a sudden, <gasps> she throws up a, 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 a kitten. Let me say this again. She throws up a little kitten. She goes, that's my payment. So throughout this movie, whenever she wants something done, she ends up throwing up and producing kittens. And she just, and this witch lady, Boro, has these goons, these dead, walking dead people. I mean, they have no, they just, uh, they follow you everywhere. Whenever you produce a kitten, they come and grab it and bring it back to Boro. So it's bizarre, but slowly but surely, all these bad things start happening to that producer. His wife, his child, just weird things and you know and she didn't tell her you might see some evil spirits so Lisa's having these visions of this spirit it's like the worst special effect this spirit keeps popping up blah, 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 and it's terrible I mean my kids walking in and out of the room while I was watching this and they were laughing at me daddy what the hell are you watching that's some bad special effects that's how bad it is and the curse works both ways yeah, you're inflicting pain on somebody else, but some things started happening to you too. There's some repercussions that you don't know about. And Lisa's not who you really think she is. Yeah, she's an aspiring director, but she has a past too. Her mother left her right when she was born. She'll know who her mother is. And she was raised in Brazil by her dad. She, you know, just she has a weird background. You're learning little bit of pieces. And all these producers keep looking at this movie throughout Hollywood going, ooh, this movie is has potential. <gasps> that ending is amazing. And this Hollywood actor, he's like big time, like Tom Cruise big, is going to be in her film. And they meet, you know, there's like a little kind of a love connection there. So she's dating a dude who's a big star in Hollywood. She's doing well for herself until people around her start dying. Yeah. The friends that she stayed with, things started happening to them, bad things and People trying to put hits on people, trying to kill her. I mean, this curse is evil. And she just keeps throwing up these kittens. Well, she went back to borrow. Look, I don't want no more part of this. Stop the curse. I don't want to, oh, the curse can't be stopped. It is what it is, bitch. You got to deal with this shit. So all this stuff. And you try to go against the witch. The, the witch going to fuck you up. And the witch is an old entity that's been around for thousands of years that it jumps from body to body when the body gets old and decrepit it needs to find a new host and the body she's in now is getting kind of old so she's looking for a new host or it whatever it is looking for a new host and man the girl who's the star of this indie film is wearing an eye patch you're like that's bizarre because in the movie she's not wearing an eye patch so something happened in this movie why she's wearing an eye patch and come to find out when they was filming this movie in the woods, the director and the star of the movie, they had a little love connection. They was messing around and they got on some, some drugs and got high as shit. You know how directors are. Directors try to get you to do anything to bring out the real, the in-depth best out of you for their film. Directors can be very, very selfish. She goes, whatever you got to do. Homegirl grabbed the real knife and she cut her hand. Is that real enough for you, bitch? She's like, yeah, keep filming. I like this shit. And it's a horror film, so she's doing all this weird shit. But when they got high together, they start hallucinating and start doing weird shit. And Homegirl got a blunt object, dug out her eyeball, and ate it. Homegirl filmed that shit. Didn't tell her. And then put it in her movie. That's what the, the crazy ending is all about. And she's like, oh, bitch, you're making money off of me. Didn't tell me. 
I'm coming to Hollywood to kill your ass. So you got all these people trying to kill each other because they're pissed off by some form or another. And like I said, movie business in Hollywood can be really, really dangerous. And so she went to Borrow and said, look, bitch, I'm tired of spitting up kittens. No more. I ain't doing that shit no more. And Borrow said, okay, no more throwing up kittens. Well, her and this Hollywood hunk are hanging out and she's getting hot flashes. She goes, man, I need to cool down. My body's hot. She goes to take a shower at his place. And there's a hole in her rib cage. And it's not an ordinary hole. It has lips. I'm like, that looks like a vagina. But it, no, no, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. She starts having stomach pains. And she gives birth to a baby kitten. Not throwing up this time, but through that little hole. So yes, that is a little vagina on the side of her rib cage. A cat pops out. Guy comes in the door and says, what the fuck is all this noise? What's going on? What the fuck is there? There's a cat on the floor. How did it get there? Freshly born. Then this big old goon come bust through his door that belongs to Borrow and come grab that kitten and take it back. Well, I think she's eating those kittens and she feeds those to her goons to keep them alive. They need, they need flesh to, to survive. And I'm like, this movie just got strange. Oh, but it gets stranger. I heard there's a really love scene in this movie that's really really weird I'm like well how weird could it be well she got out the shower she's butt ass naked they're hugging and kissing and they're feeling each other she grabs his hand and puts it on that little hole where that little vagina's at on the side of her body he's rubbing it she's moaning and groaning her eyes roll up in her head I'm like no no they no they're his whole hand goes inside that vagina on the side of her rib cage. Yeah. And he's going in and out. They lay down on the bed and he's the most bizarre thing I wish I can unsee. That was the, that was the big sex scene in this movie. His hand penetrating his vagina on the side of her body. She uh, orgasms and oh my god, yeah, this movie is fucking weird. So the climax is everything is coming to a head. The producer goes blind. He has a worm stuck in his eye. She pulls his worm out. His worm's about twenty-five feet long. Fucks up his vision. His son gets turned into a zombie dude by Boro. He's dead. All of Lisa's friends tragically get killed. So if you're associated with Lisa, stay far away because you are going to die. This is crazy. Now, the practical effects of people dying, people are getting heads cut off with a machete and then ripped off. I mean, the movie is grotesque. Her boyfriend, the Hollywood guy, tried to save her at Borrow's place. They hit him with a machete and rips his head off. Everybody gets fucked up in this film. And now the lady with the patch, the actress lady who's mad at Lisa for filming that shit and showing the world, has teamed up with Boral. Well, Boral got other plans. She's like, look, bitch, I need a new body. I want to get Lisa's body because it's young and fit. The transformation didn't work because Lisa escaped. Um, later on in the film, she sacrifices herself and lets Burrow jump into her body. So her ex-friend lover slash pissed off motherfucker with an eyeball missing is like, oh, Lisa Nova, I'm coming for your ass. This movie, Netflix, I, why? I was attracted to this movie because you have an indie director following her dreams and chasing her dreams, gets that one phone call to come to Hollywood. We're gonna produce your film. You get to direct it and you're gonna... Man, this movie took some turns for the worse. I... There's a lot of weird shit in this movie. I, this shit I can't even explain. But in the end, 
another producer says, we like your film. <laughs> we want to produce it. You're going to direct it. You can sign this brand new contract. Uh, it's going to happen. So basically, you sell your soul to become a director in Hollywood. And you better be careful of the people you hang around and the people you do business with. And oh, and stay away from voodoo people who make you throw up kittens because it's going to end badly. But she's having these nightmares and her mom are in these nightmares that she never seen. It's this faceless ghost, you know, and it's trying to tell her something. So she's going to go back to Brazil at the end of the movie try to find her mom and... Yeah, a lot of weird shit because that lady, that thing that produces uh, these entities and, and possesses bodies, there's families missing members of their family for years because Boro possessed them. You know, she possessed this woman who was married with children and had a husband. And he's like, I ain't seen you in 10 years. Where have you been? And Boro's like, look, motherfucker, I possessed this body. You ain't getting your wife back. She's dead. Matter of fact, this body is rotten. I'm about to get another one. It's, it's mind blowing. But that little demon thing that keep popping up, one of the worst special effects in history of film. If you want to just watch it for a couple of episodes, or I think it's episode seven or six, where that weird love scene happens, yeah. Yeah. I, oh. Brand new cherry is fucked up. This is one of the weirdest, worst miniseries I've ever seen. People are sick. People who are into voodoo and witchcraft, you might like this film. Um, damn. Yeah. I'm disgusted. With that, I say thank you for watching. <laughs> Take a risk on watching this. It's on Netflix. Brand new cherry. And let me know what you think. Have you seen this miniseries? Did you like it? If you did, you need some psychological help, motherfucker, because this shit is crazy. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and tell all your friends. And more importantly, leave your comments down low. And I'm out. I'm going to go drink some holy water after watching that shit. Peace. And I love you. And remember, it's just my point of view. <laughs>